Hummingbird feeders, as you would expect, attract hummingbirds. But on summer nights in Tucson, Arizona, they have another visitor. My name's Kurt Frazee. I live here on the north side of Tucson. And uh, we, uh, we have a lot of bats that come by. The uh, nectar feeding bats arrived around August 1st, the Lester Longnose bat. And they'll be here until October, at least they were last year. So uh, they've been coming every summer and they empty my uh, hummingbird feeder every night. I'm Carol DeAngeli. I've lived in Tucson for about uh, 28 years. And um, so the um, bat researchers are here. They're going to um, put up mist nets and try to capture bats. And yeah, it's really cool. I'm happy to be part of it. I'm fascinated by this. So I'm just delighted to be part of the study. Now the bat. The study is focused on the lesser long-nosed bat. Nice. It's a very gentle bat very charismatic bat, and it has really interesting behavior. Ted Fleming has been studying these bats for decades. And there's still so much we don't know about this bat. We do know that each spring, a large number of lesser long-nosed bats fly from Mexico to southern Arizona, where females give birth to a single pup. It migrates up to 1,200 kilometers to get to the maternity sites here in Arizona. They feed on nectar from the flowers of columnar cactus like saguaro and organ pipe. And then they show up in town visiting hummingbird feeders. It's a chance to capture and learn more about them before they fly back to south and central Mexico. Do a lot of moving around. Well, the project is to get detailed information about the foraging behavior of these bats using this very sophisticated uh, Israeli atlas tracking system. Nobody's used this system here in the United States before. The Bat Lab at Tel Aviv University pioneered methods of using the Atlas system to track bats. Graduate students from the university are assisting Ted with his research. Their work is funded by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. It takes a lot of money to fund a project like this. And thanks to people like you, who value wildlife and conservation, Game and Fish is contributing to the research as well. Ooh, nice, nice. Your gifts through azwildlifehero.com help a lot because Game and Fish gets zero tax dollars from the state's general fund. And the Conserve and Protect funds have gone to purchase most of the supplies required, so the transmitters and the stations and computers and hummingbird feeders. These tiny radio transmitters make this project possible. First of all, it can be used as on very small animals because the tags are really small. Have you got that placement? Like our tags that we just put weighted uh, 0.8 grams, so we can put it on a small bat, which wasn't possible in the past. They glue the transmitters to the bat's backs and wait for the glue to set before releasing them. The transmitter battery lasts about a month and the tag will eventually fall off. But first, it emits a radio signal that can be picked up by a small network of receiving stations. And they've been flying all the way west. We put up 10 stations here in Tucson, Arizona. So we're looking at one of the big antennas that we put up in, the, in people's backyard. And whenever it picks up on a bat, it sends the data to a computer and that will send it to us. And so what? Having three greens gives us a localization of the bat. When at least three antennas detect a bat simultaneously, the Atlas system can triangulate and pinpoint its location. We can get the accurate location in real time. We're basically getting a really distinct path of the bat. That's what's most exciting about the Atlas system. It can show the actual flight paths the bats are taking and help researchers answer some questions. Are they foraging together? Uh, are they visiting the same sites every night? Or are they more explorative? That can tell us a lot about decision making, learning, navigation. All right, Mama. We want to infer the foraging decisions that these bats are making. And knowing that is gold because that's hardly ever known for any bat species. By collecting DNA, they hope to learn if the bats traveling together are related. And then we have these uh, hummingbird feeder plots that we're putting out 
Yeah, and one, one of the things that's pretty rare in science is to be able to manipulate, uh, you know, especially in field work and biology, is to be able to manipulate the food source. So we have 16 total hummingbird feeders at each of the three sites. And what we're looking for here with the video monitoring is for bats to discover these. These have not been placed here before. And so, yeah, we're very curious to see when they first figure out that the source is here and then how quickly they adapt to incorporating it into their nightly plans. We've put transmitters on 42 individuals and uh, they've been trapped at about six different sites. To get an accurate location of the bats, we need three base stations at least to pick up the, the bat, um, to be able to uh, triangulate the location of the bat. Unfortunately, that hasn't been happening across the entire study area. It worked in a small part of it, which is really awesome. Um, just not in the whole area that we were studying. Had a Zoom meeting with our Israeli colleagues yesterday, plotting out our next strategy because we know what the results are or the lack of results. The team is making adjustments, moving antennas and collecting the best data it can before the bats fly south. This, this season is going to be uh, very informative. Uh, it won't give us quite the data we wanted, but it's going to give us some interesting data nonetheless. And when the bats return to Tucson, they'll be ready. We're going to give it another try next year to get the kind of data that we really want. You got a detection there? Yeah. Okay.